Hey there guys, Bastowo here. Today I want to talk to you about an extremely useful but equally under-discussed gas mask accessory. Specifically, I'll be talking about these. These are called decontamination covers. So essentially what these are are these little rubber covers that protect your filters from an ingress of decontaminating sprays. Uh, for instance, uh, soapy water, that's a very common one. Uh, so that you know, of course, if that gets in your filter, uh, it destroys it and allows for contamination to pass through pretty easily. Because decontaminators tend to use PAPR systems, or powered air purifying respirator systems, they were meant with ones in mind, like this C420. However, you still can use them with a normal, just manual setup, or APR mask. But the reason why I wanted a pair of these so bad, and the reason why I think you should get one, is because, well, decontamination sites aren't the only place where there is risk of water entering your filters. Specifically, I'm talking about rain. If you're in a contaminated environment and it starts raining, and that rain water gets into your filters, which can happen very easily, uh, that can kill you. Just straight up, it can kill you. So having something like this that just almost flawlessly guards the filter from rainwater or other sorts of liquid sprays is a pretty huge advantage. Of course, this isn't going to completely waterproof your mask. There's not really anything that can do that if you're wearing it. Uh, the closest thing is something like these M1 waterproofing bags uh, that you just, if it's, if you need to like go into water or if it starts raining and you've got it in your carrier, put your mask in this bag and seal it with the provided rubber bands and it'll be waterproofed. As a quick aside, uh, the United States military adopted this in 1951 and we've continued producing new batches of them and issuing them to this day. Like, I got this with my M50, and it's a new production. I figure I'll go ahead and show you how these actually work. As you can see, on the inside, there is just a little air vent that is created by these three supports, and this lifted up section. The actual entrance is moved to the bottom there, and that has its own supports to make sure that it can't be closed. So really, it just creates a very roundabout channel where air can pass through just no problem, but water has a lot of trouble. Then it has these three little pull tabs that allow you to more easily just get it on the filter, but I usually don't have to use them. Now to actually get this onto a filter, uh, I'm using a regular APR mask. This is my M45, of course. Uh, I would recommend threading the canister on first and then taking the bottom, like this, and hooking it, uh, first you gotta get the pull tabs out of the way, hook it over the bottom of the filter here, uh, like that, and then move to the top, and kind of pull this over, and then press down on the rims. You of course want to make sure that the inlet is pointing down when you put it on. Taking it off is very easy. You just grab right here and lift. Something I really have to note now is that they were designed specifically with the C2 and C2A1 filtering canisters in mind. For those who don't know, the C2A1 is the previous filter canister that the United States Army used before adopting the M61 uh, filters for the M50 JSGPM. But I do have a row of filters here that do work with it. Uh, over on the far left is your C2A1. This is just the base. Uh, anything smaller than it won't really work. And, but you can squeeze out a little bit more girth, uh, and that'll still work. Also, I'm just using these GSR filters as bookends. They are much too small for the decon covers. Uh, these Israeli filters, this one's very beat up because I used it a lot right when I first started doing gas mask collecting. Uh, 
they will also support it despite the weird shape of the M61, again, for the M50 JS GPM, uh, it will still actually support these, but it does look pretty goofy when you've got it on the mask with both. I figured I'd go ahead and show you what the M50 with the decon covers actually looks like. I, uh, I honestly take it back. I don't think it looks goofy. Uh, I think it actually looks pretty cool and adds some utility. This is a Impertech P3 rated canister. I removed all the labels off of it. Despite it being a little bit wider than the uh, C2A1, it, uh, it'll still work. And here on the far right, we've got the NBC3 SL from AVEC. Uh, I believe Mira Safety sells these as the SOF77 filter. Um, it is a little bit wider than the C2A1 still. It's, I think, the same diameter as the Impertech P3 canister, but you can still get this on. Uh, it just requires a bit of tugging because, you know, it's a little girthy for this rubber. The way I've been talking about these decontamination covers uh, makes it sound like they're God's most recent gift to man, but, you know, that's not really the case. Everything has its drawbacks. And for these, the main one, and really the only one that I think matters, is that you can no longer do your negative pressure check. So you cannot cover the inlet of the mask and inhale just to see if it's working. That's kind of a really big issue, but you know, it's everything's got a drawback. They're also pretty rare. Uh, it took me a while to find these and uh, uh, I only did because there's an eBay listing open right now where there's a guy who has like uh, like a huge box of them just selling them off for like 20 bucks each. Uh, yeah, if you can find that, go for it, but uh, that's probably not going to be available at some point in the future if you're indeed watching this in the future. Anyhow, with all that out of the way, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one whenever that is. I'm pretty sure there's still, like, fucking cheese in this thing. Oh my god, there is.